Well, uh, being called a journalist come with a certain responsibility. I, I did not have uh, any formal training to be, become a journalist. Uh, I think uh, the, the work of a journalist is a very difficult job that I'm, I don't think I'm ready for. So yes, I, maybe I use the uh, uh, comedian satirist card to uh, be able to ditch the responsibility of becoming a journalist. I know it's um, an easy way out. But at the end of the day, I mean, I am not even a journalist. What I say, what I do, I, I, com I comment on, on things that happen on a daily basis. Uh, I, I don't report. I, I say my opinion. Uh, if, if, if sometimes I'll say my opinion in a serious way or, or a comedic way. Uh, a journalist has a, a totally different job, which is basically reporting the news. So the thing is about, about stereotypes, whether you're talking about like Muslims or Arabs, this is basically a tool that is used by um, the media in order to drive their narratives. It, it is, it's not really any different from when you go back to the Arab uh, some of the Arab media outlets, and they would use these narratives in order to make people xenophobic. Xenophobia, hatred, and racism is a tool that is used by all of these media outlets and all of these authorities in order to achieve one thing, which is fear, because frightened masses are much easier to manipulate. How can you manipulate millions of people? Create a common enemy. Maybe the common enemy here is some brown guy who speaks Arabic or could be a white guy who's blonde who is conspiring against your country somewhere in the Arab world. It is the same thing. I mean, really, I don't really take it personally. I just think that it is basically a tool, uh, a method in order to drive this narrative. When you look, for example, at the campaign that is, uh, that is, that is basically pushed by Donald Trump, it is basically a campaign that is based on fear. Let's be afraid of Muslims. Let's be afraid of Mexicans. Let's be afraid of people who don't look like us. We, the white people, are being uh, hijacked by people who don't look like us. If you go look to France and, uh, or, or in Europe and you have all of this, uh, the rise of the right wing against refugees. The same thing if you go, go to many of the Islamic and the uh, Arab countries. It is always fear of the West, the West who is conspiring against us, the infidel West. It is, it's the same thing. The only way that you can actually drive millions of people to a, on a common narrative is to create this kind of common enemy. So it is, it's functionality, basically. It is having all of these people zooming in on a target, and because you guys are upset and afraid of this target, you have to follow me. It's as easy as that. I've been here for less than a year, so of course you feel like a little bit of an, an outsider. I mean, you're still figuring things out. But uh, I've already had a, a show running on Fusion. I've been welcomed in Sanford in the uh, program for Arab uh, reform and democracy. Uh, I'm starting to feel quite at home. So maybe in a couple of years, I'm going to run for presidency. No, it doesn't matter. I mean, Obama is a Muslim and he was born in Kenya and he has been the president for eight years. So anybody can do it. I always say that the revolution is not an event, it's a process. Uh, and this process has ebb and tides. It has high points and low points. It's not a linear um, a course that you the, from point A to point B. There are so many stages. I mean, the fact that things has things has changed. The fact that people, younger people, are more involved in politics. That was not the case before two thousand eleven. The thing that people, that the fact that people are questioning taboos and things that are not going out of the question to be questioned before two thousand eleven. That in itself is a change. The que the the fact that younger people now are looking to political taboos, religious taboos, military taboos, and, and have the liberty to discuss them without fear, this is a change. And this is, this, this, this is the real uh, um, outcome of the revolution. It's not about changing regimes or bringing down governments. It's about uh, 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 having a different way of thinking. This is the real change that we have witnessed in the last five years. And this is why I'm still hopeful that something better will come. Maybe I will not witness it in my lifetime, but you know, the seed has been planted and it's going to happen. Please observe the long game. The way that to, ha to have a sustainable long-term 
relationship with the Middle East is to encourage democracy, not to encourage regimes who use religion or militarization in order to bring that fake sense of stability and safety. Maybe they should uh, adopt a much more sustainable uh, policy towards the Middle East instead of uh, the whatever whatever works for the next four years. I think the American administration should recognize that neither uh, regimes that are based on militarization or religious dogma are good partners in uh, democratization in anywhere in the world. Uh, it has been tried before in, in Latin America, in Africa, and in Asia, and it didn't work. And uh, I think you guys end up paying the price much higher. Of uh, you, you end up paying much more in... Uh, and sending troops and and in 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 financing wars and and then you come and and complain it's like what's what's go, what's going wrong with the world we hear the american administration preaching about democracy and then we found their partners that they choose to work with are uh not that democratic i i, I think my role will be uh pointing out what I would consider is wrong, whether it is the way minorities, all minorities, not just Muslims, are being treated. Because at the end of the day, we, have, we need to look at this as being as humans, not as a part of a sect or a race or a religion. Uh, I, I, I think uh, if there is some inequality happening to one certain race or, or a minority, it affects everybody. Um, whether we criticize this or we become self-critical of our own people, or our own, uh, uh, of some of the uh, way of thought in our own ranks, this is, this is all very helpful. So sometimes I will use satire to criticize this. Sometimes I'll use satire to criticize the way from people from my own part of the world behave or think. Uh, this is all comes to the, uh, serves a, a much bigger purpose, which is um, having everybody living in the, inequality, having uh, the same kind of uh, human values, not having discrimination, racism, governing uh, people's behavior towards each other. Basically, it's being human. It's as simple as that. Well, I am really looking forward to engage with the community here in Stanford. I had the privilege of uh, coming here uh, a year ago, and I, I met with uh, people from faculty, uh, people from the student community, uh, brilliant people, and uh, I can't wait to uh, expand this kind of uh, experience. I want to uh, exchange my uh, exchange some of my experience that I had in the political environment in my home, uh, and compare notes with with the people uh, living and studying here. Uh, I intend to have uh, many student engagement. I think that we le I learn from students much more than they learn from me. So first of all, I have amazing memories in Harvard and I cannot uh, just like diss them just because I came here to a different university. It's wonderful. The only thing that like they would attest to is that the weather. I'm in California, baby. I mean, it's different. I mean, I, I, we were in the, the Spring Fellows in Harvard, which is basically um, the Arctic uh, uh, semester there. Uh, it, it's a great university. I had a wonderful time there. But here, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward for Stanford. At least I don't have to wear 15 layers to go out. Um, people here are very nice. They're very helpful. They're great. And um, I'm really looking forward to this new experience. Mm -hmm.